Christians. As I address you today, I am deeply aware of the struggles many of you face in these challenging times. Our administration knows that many of you struggle with rising costs and the search for meaningful employment. I want to assure you that your voices are hard. As your president, I assure you that we are committed to finding sustainable solutions to alleviate the suffering of our citizens. Once again, I plead for your patience as the reforms we are implementing show positive signs and we are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly 64 years ago, our founding fathers chose democracy as a form of government and launched the dream of a great country that will lead the rest of Africa out of poverty, ignorance, and underdevelopment. A beacon of hope for the rest of Africa and the world. Over six decades later, we can look back and Nigerians worldwide can see how well we have succeeded in realizing the lofty dream of our founding fathers. The world is witnessing and benefiting from the Kandu spirit of Nigerian people, our massive intellectual capacity, and our enterprise and industry in all vocations from art to science, technology to infrastructure. The dreams that our founding fathers envisaged are still work in progress. Every day, we put our hands on the plow, determined to do a better job of it. Why it is tempting to focus on what has been left undone and where we have stumbled as a nation. We must never lose sight of how far we have come in forging and holding our country together. Since independence, our nation has survived many crises and upheavals that led to the dissolution and disintegration of many other nations worldwide. Six years after independence, our country descended into a political crisis that led to a bitter and avoidable civil war. Since returning from the brink of that darkest moment, we have learned to embrace our diversity and manage our differences better as we continue to work towards a genuine a more perfect union. Despite the many challenges that buffeted our country, we remain a strong, united, and viable sovereign nation. Dear compatriots, our independent anniversary gave us another chance to reflect on how far we have gone in our journey into nation building and to renew our commitment to building a better nation that we deserve present and future generations of Nigerians. While we celebrate the progress we have made as people in the last 64 years, we must also recognize some of our major opportunities and mistakes of the past if we are to become one of the greatest nations on earth as bold as it does now to be. Our mistake must not be followed into the future. My administration took over leadership of our country 16 months ago at a critical juncture. The economy faced many headwinds, and our physical security 
highly impaired. We find ourselves at a decent crossroad where we must choose between two paths, the fund for progress and prosperity, or carry on the business as usual and collapse. We decided to reform our political economy and defense architecture. On the security front, I am happy to announce to you, my compatriots, that our administration is winning the war on terror and banditry. Our target is to eliminate all threats of Boko Haram banditry, kidnapping for ransom, and the scourge of all forms of violent extremism. Within one year, our uh, government has eliminated many Boko Haram and bandage commanders faster than ever. As of the last count, over 300 Boko Haram and bandage commanders have been eliminated by the violent troops in the northeast, northwest, and some other part of the country. We have restored peace to hundreds of communities in the north, and thousands of our people have been able to return home. It is an unfinished business, I agree, which our security agencies are committed to ending as quickly as possible. As soon as we can restore peace to many communities in the troubled part of the north, our farmers can return to their farms. We expect to see a leap in food production and a downward spiral in food costs. I promise you, we shall not further on this. Our government has been responding to the recent natural disasters, particularly the flooding in the part of the country. After Vice President Kashim Shetima visited Madibu, I also visited to assure our people that this federal government will always stand with our people in their times of trouble. At the last meeting of the Federal Executive Council, we approved a disaster relief fund to mobilize private and public sector funds to help us respond faster to emergencies. Our government has also ordered the integrity test of our dams in the country to avert future disasters. The economy is undergoing the necessary reforms and returning to serve us better and more sustainably. If we do not correct the physical misalignment that led to the current economic downturn, our country will face an uncertain future and the peril of unimaginable consequences. Thanks to the reform, our country attracted foreign direct investment worth more than $30 billion in the last year. Fellow compatriots, our administration is committed to free enterprises, free entry, and free exit in investment while maintaining the scarcity and efficacy of our legal regulatory processes. This principle guides the divestment transaction in our upstream sector while we are committed to changing the fortune positively. As such, every will supply divestment will receive ministerial approval in a matter of days have been concluded by the regulator, NUPRC, in line with the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA. This was done in the same manner as other qualified investment approved in the sector. The move will create vibrancy and increase oil and gas production positively 
impacting our economy. The more disciplined approach adopted by the central bank to monetary policy management has ensured stability and predictability in our foreign exchange market. We inherited a reserve of over 33 billion six months ago. Since then, we have paid back the inherited forex backlog of 7 billion. We have cleared the rules and means debt of over 30 trillion naira. We have reduced the debt service ratio from 97% to 68%. Despite all this, we have managed to keep our foreign reserve at 37 billion. We continue to meet all our obligations and pay our bills. We are moving ahead with our physical policy reforms. We stimulate our productive capacity and create more jobs and prosperity. The Federal Executive Council approved the Economic Stabilization Bill, which will now be transmitted to the National Assembly. This transformative bill we make our business environment more friendly, stimulate investment, and reduce the tax burden on businesses and workers who own their powers into law. As part of our efforts to re engineer our political economy, we are also reaching in our determination to implement the Supreme Court judgment on the financial autonomy of local governments. The central concern of our people today is the high cost of living, especially food costs. This concern is shared by many around the globe as prices and the cost of living continue to rise with the world wide. My fellow Nigerians, Please be assured that we are implementing many measures to reduce the cost of living at home. I commend the governors, particularly in Kirby, Niger, Jigawa, Kuala, Masarawa, and other Southwest governors that have embrace our agricultural production program. I urge other states to join the federal government in investing in mechanized farming. We are playing our part by supplying fertilizer and making tractors and other farm equipment available. Last week, the Federal Executive Council approved the establishment a local assembly plant for 2,000 John Deere tractors, combined harvesters, disc riders, bottom plows, and other farm equipment. The plant has a completion time of six months. Our energy transition program is on course. We are expanding the adoption of the presidential initiative from Compass Natural Gas for mass transit with private sector players. The federal government is ready to assist the 36 states and FCT in acquiring CNG buses for cheaper public transportation. Fellow Nigerians, while we are working to stabilize the economy, and secure the country. We also seek to foster national unity and build social harmony and cohesion. Our economy can only thrive when there is peace. As we work to overcome the challenges of the day, we remain mindful of next generation as we seek to galvanize their creative energy towards a better future. We 
need to do in the future, we wish to be quick to our children in focus. Recognizing that we cannot design a future that belongs to them without making them its architects. Considering this, I am pleased to announce the gathering of a national youth conference. This conference will be a platform to address the diverse challenges and opportunities confronting our young people. We consist more than 60% of our population. It will provide meaningful dialogue and empower our young people to participate actively in mission building by ensuring that their voices are heard in shaping the policies that impact their lives. We are creating a pathway for a better tomorrow. The 30 day conference will unite young people nationwide to collaboratively develop solutions to issues such as education, employment, innovation, security, and social justice. The modality of this conference and selection of delegates will be designed in close consultation with our young people through their representatives. Through this contact, it will be our job as leaders to ensure that their aspirations are at the heart of the conference deliberations. The government will thoroughly consider and implement the recommendations and outcomes from this forum as we remain resolute in our mission to build a more inclusive, prosperous, and united Nigeria. Our government is implementing several other youth-centric programs which to give our young people an advantage in rapid changing world. We are implementing, among others, the 3 million technical program of the Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, aimed at building Nigerian's technical talent backbone. We have also enthusiastically implemented the Nigeria Education Loan Fund, NEL Fund, which provides cheap loans to our students to pursue their tertiary educational dream. In addition, Later this month, we shall launch the Renewable Hope Global Employment and Empowerment in Europe. It is conceived as a comprehensive suite of interventions and job creation by the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment that is aimed at facilitating the creation of 2.5 million jobs directly and indirectly on an annual incremental basis while simultaneously ensuring the welfare and safety of workers across the country as is the tradition. The government will so announce all the beneficiaries of our national honors for 2024. The Senate President and the chief justice of the Federation have been conferred with the honor of the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON. The Deputy Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives have honor of Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic. CFR. While the Deputy Speaker of the House has been awarded Commander of the Order of Niger, CON. Fellow Nigerians, better days are ahead of folks. 
the challenge of the knowledge must always make us believe in ourselves. We are Nigerians, resilient and tenacious. We always prevail and rise above our circumstances. I urge you to believe in our nation's promise. The road ahead may be challenging, but we will forge a path towards a brighter future with your support. Together, we will cultivate a Nigeria that reflects the aspiration of all its citizens, a nation that resonates with pride, dignity, and shared success. As agents of change, we can shape our destiny and build a brighter future by ourselves, for ourselves, and future generations. Please join us and join our administration in this journey towards a brighter future. Let us work together to build a greater Nigeria where every citizen can access opportunities and every child can go up with hope and promise. May God continue to bless our nation and keep members of our, our armed forces safe. Happy Independence Anniversary, fellow Nigerians. Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast Show. My name is Brume Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. We were just listening to the President talk to us, but we will leave that speech uh, until when we have our guests so that we all can x-ray that speech together. In the meantime, Happy Independence Day to you all. Happy Independence Day. Today we're celebrating 64 years of independence here in Nigeria. Uh, well, I would say we've come a long way, but we still have even a longer way to go. But still, let us just celebrate the fact that we are free from colonialism. We have our country and we can just do whatever we want to do and make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Families are very difficult entities, uh, but uh, nothing beats family. So mm -hmm. no matter the trouble you find in a family, you still find solace at some point. We are Nigeria. No matter what we're seeing, you cannot say that is neocolonialism that we are having mm -hmm. because we are the ones doing this to ourselves. We are the ones who can decide mm -hmm. our destiny, as the president said. So let us congratulate ourselves. And People were saying on the social media, whatever it is, don't make the mistake of telling me Happy Independence Day. Mm -hmm. But that means maybe you do not understand English well or something. <laughs> because when someone tells you, for instance, good morning, it is a shortened form of saying, I wish you a good morning, or I pray that this morning be good to you. So when you re respond and say, what is good about the morning, it's like someone praying for you and you're not saying it. Yes, about yes. It. So, Someone is wishing you a good morning, no matter what problems you might be facing, what problems we might be facing as a country, Happy Independence Day to you Heartless. is a wish that we are wishing you. Yes, and we hope that our nation will be better. Like the President has said, we all have to put our hands in the plow. We all have to make this country work together. It, the times are hard, we understand. But with the little steps, the little things that we're doing, we're just going to have a better nation for ourselves. And today we'll be discussing the state of the nation so we have Nigeria at 64. How have we come so far? What are the achievements that we've had? And where do we expect this country to get to? So those are the things we'll be discussing much later in the show. But first, let's look at our top trending story. And this says, respect October 1 contested rights, NHRC urges security agents. The National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, urged law enforcement to respect the rights of October 1 protesters, emphasizing their right to peaceful assembly and expression as outlined in Nigeria's constitution. 
NHRC Executive Secretary Anthony Ojuku called for the government protection of protesters from violence and intimidation and accountability for any misconduct by security agents during the protest. Ojuku advised protesters to remain peaceful, avoid destruction, and cooperate with law enforcement, stressing the importance of civility and the detrimental impact of violence on a nation building. Yeah. yeah, okay, so uh, while we're celebrating Nigeria, um, uh, some people will be protesting, but you see, that's part of the celebration, with the celebration of the fact that you can, you can say whatever you want to say, you can let your voices be heard, that's the beauty of democracy. So we've come a long way. There are times in this country where you couldn't have done that, but we can do it today. So it's a celebration as well. I know there are some places or there are some things that are making us aggrieved, but this is 64 years. If you were born 64 years ago, you're a grandpa yeah. probably at this mo moment. But even then, you cannot stop learning. Mm. So we are learning as a, a country. Some, mm. some, some, some lessons that we are learning are really hard, yes, mm. but they are lessons nonetheless. Well, I, I agree with you. Um, and speaking about the protest, you know, I think the one that's going to happen in Abuja is going to happen at the Eagle Square mm -hmm. as well. And that's where the Independence Day Parade, coincidentally, is happening too. But like you said, it's also part of it because everybody wants a better country. Yeah. If we had a better country, you wouldn't find people moving abroad. You wouldn't find people not even having that quality life that they want here. So in a way, in a bit to say happy independence, it's important that we demand for a better country and who are we going to demand it from of course the government because you are the one leading us and we expect you to transform nigeria we've not gotten it right you know all the way fine i know that the president the government officials they're putting certain policies in place even though it seemed like a long-term policy and we're not saying the short and medium-term one like the one that caters to our needs right now yeah. um but i'm sure that we will get there and as long as people do not keep quiet and of course one of the things that was being asked was you know no intimidation we should be able to express ourselves because um having to protest is a fundamental human right so i should be able to tell you what i want i should be able to tell you my pains i should be able to, able to tell you my needs and you should on the other hand listen to me and start to implement those things that i'm telling you and so since today is october 1st you know a day to celebrate nigeria a day to celebrate how far that we've come along um it's important that people are coming out and saying we want this and we want a better and transformative nigeria i don't know the relationship but when you were talking about i should be able to tell you my needs and i was just thinking about a man and woman in the house <laughs> and, <laughs> and how the woman goes about asking for her needs mm -hmm. to be met you know but but that tells you that for every relationship to work for every institution to work there must be those times of protest you know it, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that you go on the streets mm -hmm. but you will call for a better life for yeah. a better uh, way of doing things and all that and the beauty of it is that it should come out or that institution comes out better mm -hmm. after that discussion yeah whether it, it turns um rowdy or something oh, but at the end of the day at the end of the day we'll sit at, at that table and we'll discuss those things mm -hmm. i just wish that after the voices of the people are raised, uh, the government will con won't continue to be government when they hear word. That's what I'm <laughs> listen <to me laughs> Just so listen, that. listen yeah. to them. Just like we do in friendship, in, in marriage, or in anything. Mm -hmm. Let us listen. Mm -hmm. The government talks, we listen. Mm -hmm. We talk, the government listens. And that's if the, the beauty. If the government talks, we have no choice but to listen. <laughs> Come on, when you go to the gas station, when you go to buy fuel, the government has spoken. The fuel subsidy is gone. Of course, you're going to buy it at the current price, so you have to listen. Um, they tell you the electricity tariff hike now with over 300. You're not nice. You have to listen. <laughs> but do, you, do you understand the point? Yeah, but I get, as I get it. As long as the government speaks, you mm -hmm. listen. And I think it's just for you to have a symbiotic relationship. For the fact that you say certain things and I have no choice but to listen to you or to just chalk it in, you should also be able to listen to me and say, maybe this isn't really working for these people. How better um, can we build this nation? I know that, you know, in the president's speech, he, he talked about, you know, the policies, all the things he has done, the foreign investment and all of that. We get it. But as of right now, do you really think people are 
in their best, in their prime? Are they happy? Those are the things we need to start looking I'm at. I'm refraining myself from answering that because we have <laughs> so many guests that will be talking yeah. about the state of the nation. But, you know, um, if I speak for myself, I've used up more than 50 of those 64 years <laughs> so mm -hmm. i know i know how it was when i was growing up N now that i'm old i know how it <laughs> is and all that but i believe in nigeria i've always believed in nigeria times are hard sometimes i just make a lot of noise and all that but i still believe in nigeria mm -hmm. and i believe it's a collective responsibility mm -hmm. so if i go back to my village now first thing i'll tell them is you are if you're a politician and you come home, you should be regarded as one of us, as just a citizen. We should stop this uh, uh, giving of chief tenancy to politicians mm -hmm. just because you're a politician. Mm -hmm. Show working. Mm -hmm. And if the person is doing well, we should encourage that person yes. to do well. Let the people have the confidence of coming back home to relate with us and talk with us mm -hmm. and know that they're not coming home just to be um, inundated by the kind of requests that we are making back home. Mm -hmm. They're coming to get what we are feeling, to go and tell other colleagues of theirs. On the other hand, they yes. need to stop coming to share rice. Yeah, because they don't, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not connected. Right. There's no yes. connection with us. So some of these people fear going home. They just go home when they know that they have something they can give. No, and that's, that's it. There, there, there are rural areas without primary health care center. They how don't even you, know that. How about you're going home to do that? How about you're going there to build something, to, you know, just kind of develop... Yeah. So we, we should have to talk to our people to know better ways of engaging these people. Mm -hmm. Because when they come home, uh, people don't talk about, let's have a meeting and discuss what is wrong with our community mm -hmm. that you can help us. They just, mm -hmm. they just go, I want to marry a new wife, I want to do this, I want to do that. And so they have gotten used to the fact that we worship them like mm -hmm. lords mm -hmm. so they come with uh, one schnapps and give to the elders and that's the end they of it nobody say, talks about scholarships nobody talks mm -hmm. about anything you just come and do empowerment when you want election uh, to be in your and favor after four years that's done after four years that's done and i think you know the the key word here what you said is a collective responsibility yes so everybody needs to find their own way their own rules of engagement mm -hmm. for instance with the elders in the community we need to make them understand that it's not just when they give you money mm -hmm. and then you say oh yes you know they're working or they're doing something how are they developing your place so even if you even if they come you should be demanding for certain things and say you know what this is what we need at the moment we need a primary health care center we need good roads we need pipe bomb water we need several things that would help our, our place like our village but not just saying oh yes when you come just give us how many bags of rice that we're going to share to the community oh ah, they brought money or oh, let everybody be happy no because it's just i think there's one of our guests that usually say belay infrastructure it's just mm. belay infrastructure after you've eaten yeah, the, go the governor said, former governor of Ekiti state uh, said that um stomach infrastructure mm -hmm. that's what he's building mm -hmm. and luckily we are we're having a a former um, a, a commissioner for information from a, a Kitty uh, that will be talking with us uh, this morning as well. So <laughs> I'm not saying it originated from the state, it originated from the governor and all that. But yes, Nigeria is a collective responsibility. We may be very, very angry with the president and all that, but we voted him. Yeah. So we, it's part of our fault. If he's not doing well, it's part of our fault. And if we don't correct him, it's our fault as well. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why this protest is coming up. And we hope that government listens, as we've listened to them, we'll, we've given them time. 16 months is quite some time. Yes. yes, we need to see the workings right now from today. At least see the roadmap. Let it not be like Lagos. Because in Lagos, you will say, okay, we have a blueprint that any governor that deviates will kick him out. Anybody who doesn't follow the the, mm -hmm. the plan, a lot of people in Lagos do not know what this plan is. We don't know <laughs> what is planned for 10 years, 20 mm -hmm. years to come. But we don't need that in Nigeria. We need to know where we are going to. Let's mm -hmm. see it clearly. Mm -hmm. And then we'll know that, okay, after three months we have achieved one or two things. And because of that, we step. believe that the next step mm -hmm. is achievable. Yeah. But we're not seeing that. And that's why people are crying. Well, we want the government to definitely do something about that. Speak to the people, um, you know, share all of your ideas with us. Share how we're going to transform Nigeria together. And I'm sure we can now all work together because if I don't know where you're leading me to, I'm sorry, I don't want to go with you. But when you let me know, then we go together, we do all of the work together and we'll just have a better nation. Mm.
All right, um, that's it. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather, and when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.